Well, good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? My name is Mike Langeth, and I'm the President and CEO of the Raleigh-Durham Airport Authority, and I'd like to welcome you to our kickoff of our airport master plan, or what we're going to refer to as Vision 2040. We're very excited to have you tonight. I'm going to give you a quick little agenda. Uh, we're going to start off, we're going to introduce our Chairman of the Board, Mr. Dickie Thompson. He's going to provide you a little bit of an overview of the master planning process and introduce uh, one of our board members and uh, probably some elected officials uh, in the audience. That will be followed by myself. I'll give you a little bit of a, a broader perspective from an airport master planning standpoint. We'll then reach out and have our consultant, Colleen Quinn from Recondo and Associates, is going to come up and is going to walk you through a PowerPoint presentation. So a lot of the slides you see up here on these uh, easels, she's going to walk you through and try to explain what is an airport master plan and what is the process, how does it actually work over an 18-month uh, period. At the end of her presentation, we're going to do something that I think is going to be great, and we want to, we want to interact with you. And what we're going to do is we're going to provide our consultants, their staff, along with some of our staff, and we're going to position them up against these poster boards, and we're going to encourage you to come forward and engage in a conversation about our master planning process. So it should be a very interactive night. We hope we'll communicate some good information, and we hope you'll participate throughout the night. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the chairman of the board, Mr. Dickie Thompson, who ha has some opening remarks. Mr. Thompson? Thank you, Mike, and good evening, everybody. And welcome to Vision, our, our launch of Vision 2040, which is RDU's master plan study that will chart the airport's future development for the next 25 years. My name is Dickie Thompson. I am the chairman of the Raleigh-Durham Airport Authority Board of Directors. And thank you so much for being here with us tonight as we kick off our next phase of development at Raleigh-Durham International Airport. So before we get started, though, I would like to recognize one of our board members that are here with us uh, this evening, our former chairman, representative from Durham County, Mr. Tommy Hunt. So Tommy, if you'd stand up for us. Thank you for being here. And I'd also like to recognize any uh, elected public officials that are here tonight. If you would stand up, please. It's Mr. Mark Stolman, Mayor of Marsville. May Thank you, Mark. Well, through Vision 2040, the Airport Authority is continuing its commitment to providing our customers a world-class experience while maintaining our role as one of the region's economic drivers. But in order to do that, we've got to plan for the future. We will be conducting an extensive study and analysis of the airport's infrastructures, facilities, and available property. This assessment will allow us to define a capital improvement and asset management program that will guide future investment in airport facilities through the year 2040. And you know, we really strongly feel that involvement from the public and stakeholder engagement will be a vital part of this process. So to ensure maximum involvement, the Airport Authority staff will oversee a total of eight public workshops including the one here tonight in Durham. And we'll give you the opportunity to ask for questions and provide uh, input on the process. And for those who are unable to attend these workshops, we will make available a website where comments can be posted and questions can be asked. So I encourage the public and airport users to take advantage of these opportunities to engage with us. This is a complex pro uh, process. And part of it is because the Federal Aviation Administration has certain requirements that must be followed during the plant master planning process and the development of a final plan. Our staff will carefully navigate these requirements and balance them with the public interest and input. And so when the final plan is approved, is presented to the board at RDU for approval, it will be the work of our staff and our consultant, Ricondo and Associates, and the public that will have formed it and created it. So we ask, so please ask questions and engage with us, either in these work sessions or online, because we really do want to hear from you. And this is an exciting time for RDU, and I am honored to be chairman as we plot the course for the future growth of our airport. 
So I'm going to call on Mike Langett to come back up and take his share. Thank you, Chairman Thompson. I'd like to thank everybody for attending tonight as we begin the uh, kickoff of our Vision 24, and we really chart our course for the future for RDU. I'm going to start with uh, describing a little bit about what is an airport master plan, because it's probably not something in everybody's vocabulary that just kind of comes to the top. So master plan is the airport strategy for future development of the airport infrastructure, and that's really the key is what is the infrastructure required for the future to make us successful, and why is that important? may not realize this, but we are a major economic driver in our local community, and we do that by investing in infrastructure to support continued region's growth. In 2012, the Department of Transportation Division of Aviation did an economic impact study. That economic impact study said that RDU had an economic impact of approximately $8 billion a year and is responsible for more than 20,000 jobs in our local community. So you can see it's a sizable economic engine for the region, and the infrastructure is the key to that. As I tell people, airport development is economic development at the end of the day. And as Mr. Thompson mentioned, mentioned we've just completed 15 years of a massive construction that's occurred at RDU. We invested, eight, we invested $68 million in the modernization of Terminal 1, another $12 million in a ramp to hold those airplanes southwest coming to those gates. We built, rebuilt Terminal 2, we built parking garages, roadway systems, interchanges, general aviation ramps. We have invested probably over $1.5 billion for the assets that sit on the ground today to help provide the economic engine for the future. Now we're going to focus on that future and we're going to look out for the next 25 years and try to make sure we have that critical infrastructure in place to continue to support the economic growth of this region. So the goal of this master planning process is to provide the framework needed to guide future airport development that will cost effectively, uh, cost effectively satisfy aviation demand while considering potential environmental and socioeconomic impacts. As a major transportation hub for the region, the primary focus of this study is to evaluate key infrastructure, things like runways, taxiways, roadways, parking facilities, the key infrastructure that really drives our aviation hub for this region. And of course, there's other questions we have to have answered as well. You probably have heard that we've been talking about a consolidated rental car facility. That's a location that we would house all the rental cars in one location. Where would we wind up putting that? So that's going to have to be something that we're going to have to ferret out as part of the master planning process. We've also heard about mass transit and how is it going to connect into our, our airport. And that's going to be an important element. So the consultants working with our staff have to figure that out and working with our partners, uh, Wake and Durham counties. And of course, we have to do a financial feasibility analysis. That is, that'll help us identify a financial plan for the airport and demonstrate the financial feasibility of what we come up with in terms of the plan. Because the worst thing we can do is come up with a plan that we actually can't fund and can't build. So it has to be realistic, but also has to try to meet the demand for the future. So Vision 24 will help us develop our flight plan for the future, and we're very excited about that. We're also excited about the fact that you chose to come and participate tonight and be part of this overall process. And it's important you participate throughout the process. It will take a little bit of time. It's going to take about 18 months to get from start to finish through this process. We think it's going to provide you an opportunity to get educated. Educated on some of the challenges we have, but also some of the opportunities, because we have lots of opportunities that are before us. And so we're excited. In addition to these public work sessions that you'll hear a little bit more from our consultant about, there's also other things you can do to, to, to stay connected. We developed a microsite. The microsite is vision 2040 rdu.com. That site will continue to have information updated on a regular basis as things get accomplished so you can see in real time what we're actually getting achieved, what we're, what we're accomplishing. It also provides you an opportunity to provide a comment. So you can write your comment right into that site. There's public comment cards here tonight. You can submit information. And for those of you that are a little more savvy than I regarding Twitter accounts and hashtags and those types of things, Yes, we're in the 21st century. We have a hashtag for this, this event, and it's called hashtag RDU2040. I had to have my daughter explain that to me, so I got a crash course last night about what a hashtag is. But those who participate, it really provides an opportunity to engage in a conversation about this master planning process. So hope you'll see we're trying to be very transparent, be very open, provide lots of avenues for communication between the citizens of this region and this planning process as we kind of move forward. So again, I want to thank you for coming tonight for our kickoff for Vision 2040 for RDU. 
And we're, we're very fortunate tonight to also have with us uh, Rakondo and Associates. Rakondo and Associates is a consultant that we selected after a national recruitment, and we think they are just absolutely fantastic. They're a great company that's going to provide great, great uh, technical expertise in this, in this planning process. And tonight we have Colleen Quinn, uh, who's going to come up here in just a moment. And Colleen's going to walk us through this planning process to help educate the community, which I think is going to be great. And so, Ms. Quinn will discuss in more detail the master planning process and the areas we'll be evaluating and developing that final plan. At the conclusion of her remarks, again, we want to engage you in a conversation and we want you to come forward and come up to these boards where we can engage you right at these boards and if you've got questions, we can try to answer those questions. Colleen will be here along with her staff uh, to try to help you uh, through this process. So, with that, uh, I'm going to close. I'm going to ask Ms. Colleen Quinn from Recondo and Associates to come up and have her go through a very brief master planning process presentation. Colleen? Great. Uh, thank you. Truly, thank you for turning out tonight. This is an exciting time for the airport and for the authority as we embark on Vision 2040. Uh, so we really want to start the discussion with the public and with the community immediately from the beginning of this study process. And that's what we're here to do tonight. Um, so this is going to be one of, as you heard, eight public workshops. Um, we're going to have a companion set each time we do one in Durham. We'll do one in Raleigh as well. So again, your attendance here tonight is, is going to be very valuable to us. Uh, and hopefully we will help you understand what we're doing as well through the course of the study. So as we embark on this study, which again is looking at a 25-year horizon uh, and establishing the strategic framework for the airport's development over that 25-year window. So we're looking out to 2040. This is our vision for 2040 based on an understanding of the airport's role in the community, its airport, uh, the airport's role in the national aviation system, uh, and the economic engine that it is to this region. There are goals that will drive our study process, uh, and as you can see, they're, they're fairly expansive. They're very broad goals, uh, but they're very important to this, to this study process. Uh, looking again out over the 25-year horizon, we really need that strategic development framework so that as specific decisions are made regarding facility development, they're done within the context of a larger fabric, a larger framework. We do want to optimize the facilities, infrastructure, and resources available to the airport and to the authority currently. Uh, ideally, we will maximize those and then build on those uh, so that we optimize the overall system performance. We also need to provide flexibility. Aviation is inherently a dynamic industry. Uh, change is one of the things you can count on uh, with an airport and as airlines operate at your airport. So we really need that flexibility built into the long-range plan so, again, the authority can make very prudent and informed development decisions when the time is right. And we also need to position the airport to meet the local, regional, state, national aviation demand. Uh, really, the airport needs to be prepared recognizing what an economic engine this is to, to the area and to the region. As you're hearing tonight, the stakeholder involvement is critical. Uh, you can see here that we're looking for a very inclusive process. We're looking for a very robust set of stakeholders to participate with us. Again, these workshops are part of that. Uh, and you'll hear a little bit more here this evening about other avenues for uh, stakeholder engagement as well. But we're really trying to capture everything from the, uh, the airport users to the local business community to the federal uh, aviation uh, participants and regulatory environment as we're really looking for that, that broad, broad base. So your involvement, your participation tonight is a big part of that. So the structure for stakeholder input uh, starts with the public workshops. Again, tonight is the first of eight, um, and I'll go into a little bit more on that shortly. But we've also got two advisory committees that will be available and engaged throughout the uh, planning process. The first of those is the policy advisory committee, uh, and that it will be focused on more the policy and community impact side of the aviation planning process. And then we'll have the technical advisory committee, which will be engaged in the technical impacts uh, and inputs that we need as we go through the analyses and make uh, recommendations and decisions. 
So as you're hearing, this is the first of eight, and we're, we'll be doing these in sets of two. So we'll have four occasions, eight workshops over the course of that period. Uh, we're looking to space those out over the course of the study so that each time we meet with you, we have a new part of the message, a new part of the analysis to, to share and to explain uh, and to, to gather your input in response to. Again, the public involvement opportunities go beyond just these workshops. They will be continual. Uh, they'll be available to you both through the website, through Twitter, through various social media. Please take advantage of those comments, questions, all of it will be valuable and it will inform the planning process. Okay, the Technical Advisory Committee, um, again, this will be touching on the technical issues that we will uh, explore and that we will touch as we go through this analysis. Uh, it will be important to us to have that technical feedback from airport users, uh, tenants, business partners, operators, airlines. Uh, so we really, that, that will underpin the technical robust nature of the master planning process. On the policy side, we also very much need the community insights and perspectives, uh, and we will get those through the Policy Advisory Committee. And you can see that has heavier local representation from your local governments to uh, regional organizations and uh, planning staff as well. Your community input is going to be critical because not everything will be a technical decision. Uh, it's really got to be informed by the local input. So I'd like to give you a, uh, an overview of the master planning process. As you've heard, this is an FAA-defined planning process. Uh, there are different ways to go about it and the different steps, but the steps are required and they're defined by the FAA. And in fact, they have two points in the planning process where they specifically uh, need to approve the products coming out of the, the planning analysis. And I'll talk about each one of these individually here in a moment, but there's five major steps in the planning, uh, planning study process. The first is the inventory, and that is our effort to understand the existing facilities, the existing operations, and the operational, financial, environmental characteristics of the airport. We really need to understand not just what exists out here, but how it operates and the challenges that the airport is faced with in light of where the industry is going and where the airlines are going. So the very first thing we do is build this foundation by understanding through an inventory effort uh, what exists at the airport here. At the same time, we embark on an effort to forecast what we believe the activity will be at the airport over the 25-year horizon. Vision 2040, as we come up with a plan, it will be designed, it will be intended to meet the demands uh, that are imposed on the airport over that 25 years. So we need to, to look forward. We need to understand what the um, projected emplanements will be. That's the emplane passengers, the board and aircraft. We need to understand what the aircraft operations will be over that 25-year horizon, and that is not just commercial operations, but it is cargo, it is general aviation, uh, it is commercial, it's air taxi, it's all the operations at the airport. Uh, we've also got to look at the peaking characteristics, and this is essentially how the activity uh, profile looks over the course of a defined period. So whether that's a peak day, a peak month, or the peak for the overall year, we look at all of those uh, because we really need to understand how the facility will function, how the airport will function under peak demands, but yet not over plan, not over design to meet those peaks every day of the, the year. We also look at fleet mix as airlines make decisions on purchasing uh, aircraft equipment as they evolve to take less fuel efficient aircraft out of the fleet. Uh, they make, make decisions for a lot of different reasons. We need to reflect that fleet mix in our forecasting effort. Number of uh, passengers carried on each airplane is very relevant, uh, so we, we need to go down that road as well. We also take that into what we call a design day flight schedule, and this is a representative schedule for a design day, the day we design around uh, it over the planning horizon. So we predict what your peak day will look like uh, at your 2040 horizon. So Vision 2040 will be designed to meet the demands of both passengers, aircraft, and the, uh, the peaks of both over the horizon. Facility requirements is essentially uh, a gap analysis, looking at the existing facilities and operational characteristics and comparing that with a forecast of activity. We identify the gap between what exists today and what would be re required to accommodate, ef efficiently accommodate that demand in the future. 
and we characterize those, we call those facility requirements, and that becomes the basis then for our subsequent work effort. Uh, so you can, you can envision facility requirements analysis as a, a gap analysis, and we then fill that gap. And we fill the gap by coming up with alternatives and ideas. These are concepts for different ways to meet the demand over the planning horizon. Uh, so we will be looking very specifically at um, the airfield, we will look at the terminal, we will look at the roadway uh, access system, we will look at parking, look at all the components and all of that will inform our concepts. Our concepts will be uh, inclusive, so it's a full airport concept. We call those the uh, alternatives. Uh, we define those first, we conceptualize these, uh, we then evaluate them in a very disciplined and documented process, so the evaluation criteria is identified, uh, it is shared, th that is information that ultimately through the course of the study will be, uh, will be shared in, in various meetings and, and workshops. And through that process we select a preferred alternative, uh, and that is that alternative that best meets the, the collective evaluation criteria, but most importantly meets the projected demand over the 25-year horizon. So Vision 2040 again is your, your, your decision framework, it's your future framework of what the airport will look like. The preferred alternative is then taken into another level of analysis because we look at the implementation of that, that plan. It would not all be built at once. In fact, it would be demand driven. So development decisions will be made and actions taken as demand warrants uh, so that you're not overbuilding, so that you're not getting out ahead of uh, the actual demand and its characteristics. It's really, it's a responsive but an informed response to demand as it develops. Uh, it also includes a finance plan, and this is looking at the financial feasibility and affordability so that there are not uh, surprises, if you will, over that, that long period. There is an idea of what that overall Vision 2040 cost will be, and it's, it's cost not just in dollars but also in understanding the impacts of that development. Uh, this all leads to an airport capital improvement program, and this is the authority's 10-year look ahead that is used for budgeting purposes uh, and, and to put specific projects and developments on their horizon so that when the time comes, again, they advance them as demand dictates. And lastly, the airport layout plan. This is the graphic depiction of your Vision 2040 concept. This is the, the picture, if you will, of the development uh, that we envision and that it has been selected as a preferred alternative uh, through the planning process. What's important is that the FAA must review and approve the airport layout plan. This is the second uh, thing that they have to review. The first thing, and I, I failed to mention it, was the forecast. The FAA needs to agree with the forecast and believe that it is reasonable so that the consultant team or uh, anyone else who, who envisions the future isn't overly optimistic or uh, underly uh, optimistic, if you will. Uh, so we really want to make sure that we're right on the money and the FAA will make sure that they have reviewed that and given their approval as well. So again, the second point in the implementation plan is the FAA's review and approval of the ALP. So our schedule over the 18 months of this study, we're in the very early end of it, as you can see, uh, with this first workshop. We're also beginning to collect the data on our inventory, and we're beginning to collect the data that will underpin the forecast. But as we move through the process, you can see that we have established the public workshops so that they coincide with points in the study where we will have additional information and initial conclusions on the analysis to share with you all. Uh, and so we anticipate that the next public workshop is going to be in the winter time frame, and at that point we will have gone through the forecast analysis, uh, we will have the FAA's feedback on that, and we will also have gone through the gap analysis. So we will have an idea of the facilities needed over the horizon. The third public workshop uh, series is going to be in the spring of 2016, uh, and at that point we will have gone through uh, taking the, the facility requirements and converting them into ideas, into alternatives. So you'll see at that point what our ideas are and, and the concepts for different ways to meet the forecast demand over the 25-year horizon. And the final public workshop series will occur after the selection of the preferred alternative. The selection of that alternative doesn't mean it wouldn't undergo continued refinement, continued tweaks as we finalize it. So you will see that preferred concept early before we refine it, and that's going to be yet another opportunity for input uh, to the planning process. And then we will finalize the, the master plan and get the submittal to the FAA toward the end of 2016. 
So coming out of this, our deliverables are fairly robust. There are uh, a lot of documentation, this final report that goes along with the ALP, um, and it documents the full course of the study, uh, the analyses, the conclusions. We also have the forecast, which again, the FAA will at this time, or by this time, will have reviewed and approved. Uh, and if they don't approve it, by the way, it is an iterative process. We work with them until they're comfortable and, and the authorities comfortable as well. Airport layout plan, again, that's the graphic depiction of the concept, uh, and that's that will get FAA approval as a deliverable. The capital improvement program, the CIP, will be an authority tool. It will be something that they use in their business planning and business operations, uh, and it's a 10-year look ahead. And then we'll also have the financial plan uh, that demonstrates the financial viability and feasibility over the, the 25 years. And that is the, the Vision 2040 feasibility. So our next steps are the PAC and TAC, that's the Policy Advisory and Technical Advisory Committee meetings. Uh, those will be convened next month, and we will begin to engage those stakeholders very specifically in a series of 12 meetings. Each committee will meet um, probably six times, and we will share the in, uh, intermediate uh, analyses, conclusions. We'll look very specifically for their feedback and input during that process. So that will we'll go on. The inventory is just starting up. We're just starting to collect the data, do the counts, um, review the analysis that we will need to undertake and the, the information to underpin that. It's underway. Again, the forecast is starting. We've collected or started collecting the historical data that underpins the, the projection of the future activity as well. So you can see that we're early in the process, but it started. Um, we do want the stakeholder input early in the process. That's why we're here tonight, um, and that's why we truly are encouraging you to give us comments tonight, to again visit the web page, use any of the social media mechanisms that are of interest. Uh, but really, your feedback is going to be important to us, um, both tonight and through the course of the next 18 months. So with that, we'd like to invite you up to the, these information boards. Please engage us, ask questions, uh, give us your thoughts, uh, give them to us verbally, fill out comment cards. But really, this is the, the first opportunity that we really want to, to engage you in some one-on-one some -on -one discussion here and, and answer the questions you may have. So with that, I appreciate the uh, attendance tonight, and we'll move over to the boards. Thank you.